Welcome to The Real News. I'm Kim Brown in Baltimore. On Tuesday afternoon, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers announced that they have approved the final permit needed to complete the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota. The company building the pipeline, Dakota Transfer Partners, could resume construction in as little as 24 hours. And President Donald Trump put the pipeline back on the table with an executive order that he signed at the end of January. The construction of the pipeline was delayed through legal disputes and months of sustained protests by indigenous people and environmental activists. And to get more, more reaction from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers announcement today, we're joined with Nick Tilson. Nick is the executive director for Thunder Valley Community Development Corporation. He's speaking to us from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Nick, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, so, Nick, first and foremost, what is your response to what the, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers um, announced today in a letter to Congress saying that they will grant the final easement needed to build the portion of the, the Dakota Access Pipeline that will run underneath Lake Ojai? What is your response to this? I, I mean, my response is that this is total injustice. This is them... Um, this is the federal government and the army going around its own processes that they have created. They are literally abandoning their own processes that they've created by terminating the environmental impact study that they're supposed to be done. Um, that environmental impact study was designed to um, actually give all of the parties, including the tribe and including all the indigenous people and including the army corps, the proper information to see what the true impact of this pipeline was going to be. Um, and they've abandoned that process. So they've abandoned the whole process. So it's a total violation of um, the rights of indigenous people, the rights of the environment, deregulated the, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a form of deregulating the uh, permitting process by basically canceling the environmental impact study process. Um, so we won't be able to see the, the true impacts, we won't be able to prove the true impacts of the pipeline on the people. Furthermore, it's history repeating itself. I mean, as indigenous peoples, we have seen this type of um, aggression and we've seen that no matter how hard that we fight, no matter how much um, that we sacrifice, no matter how much we participate in the process, that we end up with a system uh, and a system in this country that ends up creating injustice and create inequity for our people. Expand on that a little bit further, if you could, Nick, and talk about the issue of honoring treaties made with Native American nations and respecting the traditional tribal lands. Explain to us why this is important. Um, so, you know, Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution states that treaties are the supreme law of the land. And so when treaties were, uh, when, when the U.S. government entered, entered in treaties with the um, Lakota and Dakota, um, Dakota territories, um, they, uh, they basically abrogated those treaties. It violated every treaty that they, that they have ever signed with our people. Um, and in the process of doing that, they actually violated the U.S. Constitution. And uh, this is something that we've seen over and over. And the reason why the violation of these treaties are so important is um, these are peace agreements that were made at a time of war. And these peace agreements um, structured what the relationship was going to be, whose land was what, um, what was the responsibility to education? What was the responsibility to housing? All of these different things that were in the, that were in the treaties, and much of federal Indian law is based on the rights that were given in these treaties. Um, and so, this is a history. This is a continued history of America making uh, making and breaking promises um, with uh, indigenous people and willing to violate the the very laws that were intended to protect uh, protect people and protect the environment. Um, let's talk about exactly what's going on at the Standing Rock encampment site where we saw so much activity over the past several months with protesters, um, not, not just indigenous people, but people really coming from literally around the world to stand with the Standing Rock uh, Sioux Indian tribe to protest the continued construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. I, mean, I think at one point, the encampment had swelled to as many as 10,000 people. So what is the status of, of the camp encampment site now? Um, there's still people there um, in the camp. Um, obviously, the, the movement and the fight to fight the Dakota Access Pipeline um, has moved way beyond the camp. In fact, it has moved 
um, to the streets of Washington. It's moved into several cities across America, and the divestment movement has moved into um, moving into financial institutions. And so, um, yes, as important as the Osheti Shakoi camp has been, the relevancy of the of, of fighting this fight has moved to multiple different locations. Um, and a lot of what's taking place at the camp right now is people are um, cleaning up. People are worried uh, about the flood that's coming. That the, 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 that that actually area that the camp is at is a flood plain. Um, so come springtime, that area is going to be underwater. And so people are moving from there because it's important that people not be there when the flood happens, um, because that that's a that's a flood plain. Um, but I would like to reiterate, like the fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline is, uh, has spread throughout the country into many different places and many different pressure points. Talk to us about the actual construction of the pipeline because at the end of 2016, uh, the Obama administration had uh, allowed construction to, at least on the surface, come to a halt. But through many reports uh, from people on the ground who were there during that time, they stressed to us that Construction on the pipeline never ceased whatsoever. So what has actually been going on with the actual construction, the building of the Dakota Access Pipeline? Well, the, the Obama administration stopped construction underneath the Missouri River. So, um, so there hasn't been construction happening underneath the Missouri River. Um, construction was happening right up to both sides of the Missouri River in preparation that they would eventually get the easement to go underneath. Um, and, uh, and so that, that was the construction that was taking place. Um, they're also allowed to, 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 to dig up to their property line until it gets to the federal uh, Army Corps of Engineer boundary. So that's the construction that was taking place during that time. Um, now with this, um, you know, and I wanna make it clear that um, what happened today was the Army gave Congress their intent to um, grant the easement. The easement actually hasn't been granted yet, but we can. But we're expecting that that easement's going to be granted as soon as within the next 24 hours, uh, and that would give that would give the company the ability to go and begin drilling underneath the Missouri River, the very water that we've been trying to uh, and fighting to protect. President Trump and many other Republicans in Congress say that building more pipelines creates more jobs and makes the U.S. quote energy independent. So what would you say to that? Have jobs come to the areas um, where these pipelines are being built and are Native people able to capitalize on those jobs in any way? I think it's an irrelevant argument. Um, the reason why is because these pipelines and the industry that they represent um, it, these are pipelines to the past. I mean, we believe, as Indigenous people, we believe that America should, rebuild it, should be rebuilding its infrastructure, but it should be doing it sustainably. We should be, have, be, 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 be rebuilding uh, America's regenerative infrastructure. And so if we put the same amount of effort um, into renewable um, transmission lines and in, into renewable energy projects, um, you would have less of an impact on, on the environment you, you could create a process that would be more respectful to indigenous people and to indigenous people's rights um, instead of having projects like these pipelines that are clearly a pipeline to the past and an old energy model that has proven that doesn't work for people um, and, and, and continues to create a separation between the rich and the poor. So um, the fact that, that, that in the name of jobs, in the name of jobs that uh, pipelines like this are being approved is ridiculous. Uh, we should be we should we should be we should be completely dedicated to creating jobs, but we should be fo we should be focused on jobs that are beneficial for the people and the planet and create prosperity for all people. So, Nick, what are the next steps for your organization, the Thunder Valley Community Development Group, along with the Standing Rock Sioux and the other environmental groups that have rallied around stopping the Dakota Access Pipeline construction? What's going to happen next, as far as you guys are concerned? So for us, we're, we're a sustainable development uh, community development corporation dedicated to building sustainable development here on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And so our work continues to do that um, as we will continue to resist the Dakota Access Pipeline and pipelines like it. 
Um, I think for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, they're going to be um, filing for a temporary restraining order, or also known as a TRO, and um, are going to try and strive for a, a summary judgment um, that the that basically the Army Corps doesn't have the the, the, the premise or the right to to to, to approve this easement. Um, for us, I believe that this uh, that that we have to continue resisting the Dakota Access Pipeline, but we also have to. We also have to take what we learned there and the lessons that have learned in this fight, uh, because this is not the only pipeline that we're going to be fighting. Clearly, this administration has uh, decided to deregulate the EPA, has put pressure on to um, expedite permitting processes for American-based pipelines. Um, the climate that we are in um, shows that we're going to we're going to have to keep fighting these these destructive pipelines moving forward. Um, I think the difference now is. There is clearly an indigenous rights movement that exists in this country now, um, with millions of allies in this country and around the world. And um, I think that the flame that was started at Standing Rock will continue to go into other movements and continue to, to um, fuel the fights that we're going to have moving forward. Indeed, we've been speaking with Nick Tilson. He is the executive director for the Thunder, Thunder Valley Community Development Corporation in South Dakota. We've been talking about the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers sending a letter to Congress on Tuesday informing Congress of their intent to grant an easement to allow the final portion of construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline to move forward. This, this will be the portion that will go under Lake Ojai, and obviously it's not being uh, received very well uh, at this time because, as Nick pointed out earlier in the interview, there, uh, the environmental impact study um, had not been completed, and yet the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has allowed or intends to allow this easement to go forward. So, Nick, we appreciate you making some time to speak with us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching The Real News Network.